Hello, Penny. My name is James Ohusuapia, and I believe in innovation and doing things differently. This video has been prepared for you to guide you through some well-known concepts that will aid your studies and preparations towards exam. Due to COVID, we cannot meet in person to discuss. So I hope this video finds you well and helps you achieve excellence. Thank you. Okay, so in this section, we would be discussing functions. Now let us take a look at this function. I believe this syntax is not new to us. So here, we notice that there is an initialized i and x. And the while, has, the while loop has a condition that is i is less than or equals to 10. And inside the while loop, we have the if statement, which also has a condition that i modulo 3 should be equals to 1. And in the statement of the, or in the code that was written in the if statement, we have that x plus equals i, which is the same as x equals, x equals x plus i. And then we would print our x fantastic so from here we move down and we see that when we exit when we exit the while loop we go into the main loop and we see that we are supposed to print our final value of x now let us run through this code quickly now all this code is saying is that we see that i is equals to zero now for our first run we come to the while loop we come here is i less is zero less than or equals to 10 yeah zero is less than 10 so we would come to the if condition to test whether this uh, the condition there also passes now zero modulus three is not equals to one which means that the if the if statement or the if statement part will not execute so it will just come here and it would increase don't forget that we are still in the while loop. So I would increase and it would go back to the while loop again and it would come back here. Now it comes back here and now I is 1. Now 1 modulus 3 is equals to 1, which means that the condition here is true. And so we would execute the code that has been written inside the if statement. So we come here and say that now we realize that x was also initialized to 0. So we come to this part of the code and we run this code, which is x is equal to x plus i. Now we realize that since x was 0 and i is now 1, x is equal to 0 plus 1, which means that our new value for x, which means that our new value for x is 1. So x here is 1. Now, since this is done with, we would go back to the while loop. Now, it, there would be an increment after we exit the if loop, and there would be an increment, and then we would go back to the while loop again. Now, while is 2, i has been increased to 2, and it would go back and test the condition in the if condition, the if condition. So, we test it since 2, uh, two modulus 3 is not equal to 1, it won't execute. Therefore, we would pass the whole if statement and increase i again. And then we would go. Now, we would go back to the whole condition. Now, i is 3. Now, 3 modulus 3 is not equal to 1. And then we would pass and we would increase and go back to the whole again. So, this is how the whole cycle is. We would come here. We would come here, increase and go back here. We would come back. We would increase and go. So, now, i is 3. I, 3 modulus 3 is not equal to 1. So we won't execute the whole if part. We won't execute the if part. Now we would come here and we would increase. Now we increase to 4 and then we will go back to the condition again. Now 4 is less than and equals to 10. 4 is less than 10. So we would we would come inside since that condition for the while holds true. And we would come 4 modulo 3 is, is it equals to 1. Now this is true. 4 modulo 3 is equals to 1. So we would come back inside the if statement and we would run it now x don't forget that our our new value for x is one don't forget this that our new value for x is one so it would be x is equals to this would be the same as for the new one for x for i equals four for i equals four you see that it will be x equals to 
are uh, x now x equals to x plus one now our x is one so x equals to one plus our i now our i is four which means that x is now five so we would print that one to here so our so this would where i'll write our values for x now x is one say x sorry I'm coming sorry for that one so from all the explanation i just did we come to realize that x is 1 and 5 since what we just did so now we go back again we start our looping back again and then we go to i we increase i to 5 now 5 modulo 3 is not equals to 1 we increase and go 6 modulo 3 is not equals to 1 we increase and go now 7 modulo 3 is equals to 1 so we would enter here we would enter into the if statement and then we would execute the x is equals to x plus one now we realize that our current value our current value for x is five so it's the same as saying x is equals to five plus i but our i now is seven which means that x is equals to 12. so our new value for x is 12. so we would increase all this while till nine now when we get to nine nine modulo three now when we get to nine we have to know that nine modulo three is not equals to one so we would pass an increase to ten now i is less than or equals to ten which means that the condition for the while loop has been met therefore our while loop breaks now we come out here and since we have printed this when we break outside of the while loop it is, it is required of us in the main loop that we print the current value of x which is here so our current value of x is 12 and that is it so when we look here this is our answer this is our answer okay so i hope this syntax is clear to us i hope how it works is clear okay so Okay, so this one also works in the same format. The only thing that changes here is the condition in the while loop and the if statement. That's the only thing that changes. But apart from that, it uses the same logic. Okay. So now let us take a look at the for loop. Okay, so let us look at this for loop. Now we realize that i and x has been initialized to zero so now let us enter into the for loop condition now this is the condition for the for loop this is our initialization this is our condition and this is our increment part so now this is how the flow of the for loop works so when i enter into the for loop my program runs like this it initiates my i to one and then it compares my i to this condition if it is good then it is it will come here it will run this whole program and it will come back here and it will increase and it will come back here and compare then it will go back that is how our for loop would be running okay so forgive me for the writings on the screen so let us go and calculate how this function is supposed to run so my r is equals to one here now I come here, i is less than one is less than five. And I come here, one modulo two is equals to one. So I would come here. And then I said this is the same as x is equals to x plus i. So x is equals to x. Now don't forget that x has initialized to zero. So x is equals to zero plus i, which is one. So one. So our current value for since this printf is needed, we'll be writing our x values here. So our x, the first one is 1. Now it would go, it would come here after the whole thing. It would come here and it would increase. Now after it has increased, it would come and compare here. It would come and compare it here. Now 2 is less than 5. So it would go and implement the if statement. Now if it comes here, 2 modulo 2 is not equal to 1. It is false. So it will come to the else condition. Now the else, else condition also states that we should decrease the x so which means that 
our x would be decreased so since our x is 1 we would decrease our x by 1 which means that our x would go to 0 so our new value for x is now 0 then we we would go back here and we would increase our i now our i is 3 and 3 is less than 5 so we would come to the if statement and compare now 3 modulus 2 is equals to 1 so we would come here and do this now x is equals to x plus i but my i is now 3 and my, don't forget that our current value of x is 0 so x equals to 0 plus 3 so x is now 3 over here and we would print it so our new x is 3 now we would come and increase so now our i is 4 now 4 is less than 5 so we would come and run the if statement now the condition 4 modulus 2 is not equals to 1 it is not equals to 1 so we would come to the else statement now the else requires us to decrease our x by 1 that is what this decrement operator is there for so we would decrease our x by 1 and then print it so if we decrease our x by 1 it would be 2 2 <clears throat> so since we have decreased it by 1 we would print it now when we are done with this since if we increase it again if we increase it again i would be equal to 5 but the condition says that i should be less than 5 so we would break from the for loop now when we break from the for loop we would come to this part of the main loop the main statement which is the print function and this one requires us to print the current value of x so the current value of x would be 2 the current value of x it would be 2 and then we are done with our we are done with the whole function so this is our answer yes so let us move on so this function this function also follows the same analogy as the one that we did now the only difference here is that <coughs> when whenever you are writing a function and you see the continue this continuous statement here it forces the flow of the how let me let me express this in a more simpler way when we see this continue here it forces the flow of the loop to go back to the beginning it forces it to go back to the beginning so look at this for loop now it says that when it says that now if do this 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 if i if you enter into the if statement and then it is true you execute the if and then you increase and then you go back fantastic so if it is not so then we go to the else part it says that after we print it after we print after we have print we have printed the current x this continue there is forcing us to go back it forces us to come back to the start of the loop it forces us it forces us to come back to the start of the loop so this function this function is the same as what we did on the previous page it is the same as this one the only difference between them is that there is a continual function here the only difference is we have this continual function there now what this continue does is that it actually forces it forces the flow it forces the flow of the control of the for loop so let's say after executing all of this after i print this i hit the continue loop i, I, I hit the continuous statement now this continuous statement would send me back it would send me back to the for loop it would send me back up there it would send me back now let us know that it would send you back here and then you would continue your process there it doesn't do anything dangerous it just sent you back to the start of the for loop to continue your process so apart from that it's still the same as what we did